Hi there, my name is Maddie Nazar. I'm a doctor in the UK. I have a background in training in trauma and orthopedics and accident and emergency. Um, I'm currently working as a general practitioner up in the Lake District and I have a specialist interest in wilderness medicine. Now in today's video I'm going to be watching the iconic sort of cliff dive scene from the movie uh, Lone Survivor, going through this scene and I'll be breaking down the injuries that these soldiers sustained uh, during this drop. Now in this clip we are going to be seeing people uh, sustaining injuries and so if this isn't for you, you might want to look away now. Yes, the fucking radio, we're moving! Roger that! Oh, goodness me. Okay, so the first injury here is this guy's just been shot in the foot um, and that looks really painful. Um, you know, a bullet is traveling at high speed and with it hitting the bone like that, you know, it may well cause the bone just to explode or to shatter into pieces. Um, so as a minimum, I would be concerned about um, a fractured bone uh, and also, you know, it causing disruption to the surrounding structures, so ligaments, tendons, um, and muscles um, and although this guy might be able to walk on it at the moment I'm guessing that would probably be just due to the fact that he's got adrenaline surging through his body and him being in a fight and flight mode. Um, now as that wears off I'm sure he's going to be in an excruciating amount of pain. Um, so out in the field the way that I would treat this is get it all bandaged up to help prevent um, further blood loss um, and also try to reduce the risk of infection. Um, now, when we got into the hospital, we would definitely want to get an X-ray of the foot to see the extent of the damage to the bones, but then also we're gonna to need to give him some possible sedation and some um, strong painkillers just for us to explore the wound to see the extent of the damage. Oh, goodness me, straight through the arm. Okay, so the second injury here is this guy gets shot. Uh, through the arm and it looks like it goes clean through and the principles that we spoke about with that first injury with a um, projectile traveling at high speed you know if it hit the bone in the arm I'm sure you'd be getting a fracture um, and it would probably splinter the bone um, which is going to make carrying anything on that side very difficult um, but what I'd really be concerned about here as well is if there's been a disruption to the blood supply because you have a main artery that runs through the arm there called the brachial artery um, and if that gets hit, then you're dealing with an arterial bleed, which is really serious. Um, you know, people can die from arterial bleeds within a matter of minutes. And if that's the case, what you're going to want to do in the field is apply a tourniquet um, above the injury to help prevent um, excessive blood loss. Um, but this chap's going to need to be rushed to an accident and emergency, and he's going to need a vascular review to have a look at the state of the blood vessels in his arm and uh, repair what they can. Marcus, on there! Oh, gosh. Yeah, wow. So yeah, this next uh, injury is that from an RPG, um, and there's a two-part sort of mechanism to this. The first is the explosion that's actually caused by the RPG. Um, that in itself is dangerous. Um, and the second thing is the shrapnel projectiles that are produced as a result of the RPG's impact. Um, you know, in the accident and emergency department, we have uh, quite a large amount of patients coming through who've had foreign bodies thrown into the eye from doing a bit of DIY. And that could be something as simple as a splinter or a small iron filing. So can you imagine, you know, the extent of injuries that could be caused by large pieces of shrapnel or rocks flying around? We're falling back! You mean fall off? Yeah! Oh, goodness Fuck. me. Ah. Wow, they're going to try and get that's just... Yeah, wow. I mean, can you think of the bravery in these soldiers to have to jump from a cliff like that? Um, and as he says, you, you know, you mean fall off rather than fall back. Um, you know, I can only imagine that there's going to be polytrauma here. So multiple injuries to each and every one of them. And uh, really, in these situations, you'd want to be calling out uh, sort of a helicopter 
maybe to come and pick these people up because you wouldn't really want them to be moving after sustaining these injuries and surviving. Now, in the Lake District, we have the Air Ambulance and the Mountain Rescue Team um, who go out and collect people who've been injured up in the mountains in the Lake District. Um, and often when such patients are brought through, they're brought through on a spinal board with their neck immobilized from really severe injuries. Um, and so I can only imagine the types of things that these guys have, have sustained. Oh gosh. Wow. Oh my goodness. So that one is really bad. The guy's sort of almost face planted the ground there and he's got a hyperextension injury there to his C-spine. And I would really be concerned about him moving that after sustaining this injury. Um, as there's a possibility that he's fractured one of the vertebra um, and possibly even the spinal cord as well. Um, now I've actually had a patient come through who has sustained this type of injury and bizarrely they were able to walk through into the department um, and it was only when we put them through the x-ray machine where we were able to see that he'd actually fractured what's called the odentoid peg. Um, which is basically a small stump of a bone that allows you to rotate your head and neck on an axis. Um, now, the risk of that is that if it's unstable, it can cause um, spinal cord compression and damage. Um, and so it was amazing to think this guy had actually walked through to the uh, emergency department. Anyway, straight away we immobilized his neck and uh, he ended up needing what was called a halo brace to be applied to keep his head and neck fixed for 12 weeks to allow this fracture to heal. So, you know, although it didn't look that bad, or maybe it did look that bad in this scene, the, the possible uh, injuries you can sustain are really serious. Oh wow, okay, yeah, this one is really bad. So the guy's just gone high speed uh, head injury into this tree. And you know, of course, I'd be worried here about things like facial bone fractures or skull fractures. Um, and if he hasn't lost consciousness now um, and died, I would be worried that when he stood up, he's, you know, he's possibly gonna have some um, brain damage um, or swelling around the brain. Um, now, initially, this might present with him being a bit more um, drowsy or vomiting um, or acting bizarrely, but it can lead to coma uh, and death. Um, and so if anyone you know, that we're concerned about with a head injury comes through, we get them straight through into the CT scanner to have a look at the extent of the injury on the brain. Um, and if there is brain damage, some patients end up needing a craniotomy, so a bit of a removal of the skull. Um, to allow to, uh, the pressure to be relieved off of the brain. Um, and so, I mean, this one was, was terrible. I, wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this guy didn't survive. Oh, goodness me. Goodness me, that was bad. That was bad. Let's see. I mean, the sound of that was terrible. Let's just hear that again. Oh, God. God. Yeah, I mean, by the sound of that, whatever he's hit, you can wave goodbye to because, you know, you can um, compare an injury like this to being in a high speed road traffic accident. Um, and so whatever he's hit that, whether it's his leg or whether it's his back or, or his arm, you know, he's going to have fractures wherever that is. Um, oh, goodness. I just you feel for these people. I mean, the stuntmen in this scene have done an amazing job, haven't they? But to think that someone had to actually experience this and go through it, you know, um, it's dreadful. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And, you know, to add insult to injury, you know, they might have picked up all of these injuries going down the hill and then they have an abrupt stop um, with um, hitting the bottom. And that in itself can do... Um, you know, as much if not more damage than the injuries they picked up along the way. Um, and what I'd be worried about with that final guy there, you know, he's basically landed on his back against a tree and the tree will always win that battle. 
Um, I would be worried about, again, vertebral um, fractures and spinal cord damage. And I wouldn't be surprised if this chap has trouble with walking. Um, and so, you know, you would want him immobilized from the spinal board and put through a CT scanner, an MRI scan um, to check if there's damage of the spinal cord. And you're gonna want to constantly monitor um, his nerve supply down in his legs to see if um, he has sustained any paralysis and he might need a, a, you know, urgent spinal surgery for something like this. So um, there, are, there, are, there aren't that many spinal centers in the UK. Um, and so if he was brought through somewhere like the Lake District, he might need to be airlifted again back out um, to go and have emergency surgery. Okay, you've been watching Dr. Madi Nazar and I've been breaking down the possible injuries these soldiers have sustained um, from a clip from the Lone Survivor movie, which is of course based off of the true events of these brave soldiers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.